Welcome, and thank you for being with us tonight, Wednesday, March 20th, for the Berkeley City Council District 7 Candidate Forum. My name is Joe Loss of the League of Women Voters of the Eden Area. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that encourages informed and active participation in government. We do not support or oppose candidates or parties. This forum is being presented by the Voter Service and Education Arm of the League. In this District 7 special election, voters will elect their new representative on the Berkeley City Council to serve until November 2026. This will compete complete the term of council member Rigel Robertson, who resigned in January. I'd like to remind everyone that the candidates have all agreed to participate under the ground rules set for this forum. You can see the rules on the league website on the candidates forum page. One of our volunteers will also put the link in, a, in the chat. Berkeley Community Media is live streaming tonight's forum on Comcast Cable Channel 33. We are recording this forum and the video will be available on our website, lwvbae.org, on our YouTube channel with links on our social media accounts at lwvbae. There will be two candidates on your ballot for this special election which will take place on April 16th. The candidates are James Chang and Cecilia Luna Parra. You should be receiving a ballot in the mail shortly. You may drop them off ahead of April 16th at a drop box location near you or in the mail. The drop box location on the UC Berkeley campus is between Sather Gate and the Architects and Engineers Building. So let's go over a few rules for the forum. Each candidate has two minutes for opening remarks. The timekeeper will single candidates with a count, countdown timer, which count down the seconds from two minutes. The board will turn red, and then the picture will change to red when the full two minutes is up. Attendees have the opportunity to submit questions when they registered for the webinar through Zoom. If you have additional questions, you may submit them by clicking on the Q&A icon and typing your questions. Our volunteers will take the questions and pass them on to me. All questions will be screened to avoid duplication and personal attacks. We will be proceeding in alphabetical order tonight by last name for opening statement. The order of answering the questions will be alternated and each candidate will have one minute to respond to each question. Again, the timekeeper will signal the candidates. There will be no separate rebuttals. However, the candidate may choose to use some or all of their one minute to rebut the response given by another candidate. Following the questions, each candidate will have one minute for a closing statement. Each candidate will now give an opening statement of two minutes. Let us begin with candidate Chang. Hello, League of Women Voters, and hello to those of you who are watching over Zoom or on TV or this recording. My name is James Chang and I'm running to be your Berkeley City Council member. I'm running because I love Berkeley and I love Berkeley because I met my husband here in Berkeley, but more importantly, it's that Berkeley has allowed me to lead authentically, whether that's working at City Hall as a chief of staff to a council member for the last seven years, or that is me serving as the graduate student assembly delegate and legislative director, or it's me having served two terms thanks to the Berkeley voters as your rent stabilization board commissioner. One of my proudest moments being that I was the one that brought the rent board back onto campus after the pandemic. And it is through my experience that I am running on three things. The first thing is being affordable housing. District 7 is the most expensive place to live. Safety, 
students have to feel safe walking home at night and an economically vibrant um, telegraph that supports small businesses. And it is with my experience and what I'm running on that I'm proud to say that I'm endorsed by the East Bay Young Democrats, East Bay Stonewall Democrats, our governor, our Lieutenant Governor, Eleni Kunalakis, Assembly Member Alex Lee, Liz Ortega, and the super majority of Berkeley City Council. I am super excited for this forum today and I'm super excited to hear your questions and, and learn more from you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Candidate Cheng. Candidate Luna Parr, your opening statement, please. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. My name is Cecilia Luna Parra, and I am proudly running to represent Berkeley City Council District 7, the student district in the city of Berkeley, as a progressive, experienced, and committed student organizer. This district is approximately 95% students, mostly undergraduates, and the median age is 19 years old. Unfortunately, housing and affordability plagues this neighborhood and consistently affects people's everyday lives. I have strong and long lasting relationships with the campus and District 7 community organizing. Um, throughout my undergraduate years, I worked really hard to improve the housing crisis by increasing supply, by drastically improving tenant protections and making sure that students know their rights. I am fundamentally committed to making Southside an affordable, safe and welcoming place to live. So people are actually able to afford to go to Cal and live near campus and long-term residents of the city aren't displaced. As the former president of the uh, Cal Berkeley Democrats, which is the official arm of the Democratic Party on UC Berkeley's campus, and of Telegraph for People, a progressive urbanist organization working to create a car-free Telegraph Avenue in Southside, I have worked to, uh, to give motivated students the tools and support that they need to fight for progressive legislation. I'm cur the current chair of the city's Environment and Climate Commission and a De California Democratic Party delegate, um, and I was also previously a member of the Zoning Adjustments Board. A vast majority of current um, and uh, Democratic leaders in District 7 support me because I am passionate, I am experienced, and I am devoted, and I would be the best candidate in this race to represent District 7, a space I hold so dear to my heart. I am endorsed by the student advocacy organizations, Cal Berkeley Democrats, YDSA, and Telegrapher People. I'm also en endorsed by the majority of the executive board of the uh, Berkeley student government, including the ASUC president, as well as a super majority of current District 7 city commissioners, um, as well as UAW Region 6, which represents student academic workers. Um, those are only the campus endorsements that I have, but I am excited to share more with you and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So we'll start the questions again. I'm going to alternate um, the questions and I would uh, be happy to repeat the question if you'd like to, me to. So we're going to start now with candidate Luna Para. If elected in your first year, what do you aim to accomplish for your constituents? Thank you, this is a great question. I think um, one of the most important things that this district unfortunately has been lacking is um, consistent student representation and accountability. Um, so I wanna work as council member to bridge that gap between students and other residents um, and ensure that students are involved in every step of the decision-making process. Um, if elected, I will hold regular town hall meetings and open office hours for District 7 residents um, and meet with a coalition of community and affinity organizations multiple times a month uh, to make sure that the needs of District 7 residents are consistently being heard. Um, and the ultimate goal in this um, will be to bridge the gap that students and uh, City Hall have at the moment. I think that Students are an integral part and young people are an integral part of this community, of the city. Um, and our voices are consistently uh, being pushed to the side. And um, I wanna work to create a community between the two spaces. Thank you. Candidate Chang. Thank you. Uh, the first, first thing that I do wanna address is to actually make sure that the chess club items that was pulled after council member Robinson um, resign gets put back onto the docket and make sure that that gets resolved. Uh, this, the, but the main thing that I hope to address in this next two years is really addressing um, on a high level affordability and affordable housing, but really on a block by block level um, regarding um, safety. Um, and I think that is the most important part of what is hopefully possible within, within this first year, if not the two years. And 
it's as simple as making sure that we increase street lighting. Uh, it is hopefully making sure that, you know, crack windows are fixed. Uh, and a little on the harder side is, of course, making sure that our empty storefronts are filled and also finding ways to make sure that we have more eyes on the streets. Uh, and of course, taking more um, uh, intensive uh, and necessary me measures block by block if necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Chang, question number two. What are a few overlooked issues impacting student well-being that you believe you could begin to address if elected? Yeah, I think oftentimes uh, mental health care is something that we kind of talk about, but it's not necessarily something that we are really like centering um, through, through many forms, both um, candidate Lunapar and I both talk about, you know, um, the overarching theme of mental health and a lot of other things that really drives public safety issues. And I think mental health, harm reduction, and making sure that our health department has more resources to address things such as survivor advocacy is very, very important. I think all of these things are important in regards to things that are not being, being overlooked. And I think something that is also overlooked oftentimes is also reproductive access and service. Um, having been the only candidate to establish a relationship with Planned Parenthood, you know, I also hope that that is something that we can help uh, increase access to as well. Thank you. Candidate, candidate Luna Parra. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think uh, I wanna talk about um, a specific part of public safety that I think regularly gets overlooked, um, which is uh, the impact of traffic violence and uh, lack of transportation and safe streets. Um, as students, we tend to be um, uh, overwhelmingly pedestrians, transit riders, and cyclists, um, yet we are disproportionately impacted by traffic violence, um, often ca caused by uh, infrastructure that isn't designed, um, street infrastructure that isn't designed to serve the people uh, that are most likely to use it. Um, I am incredibly passionate about an accessible, affordable, varied, and widespread transportation system, um, and I'm looking forward to working closely with AC Transit um, and uh, 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 small businesses and student organizations to push to make Telegraph Avenue car free in Southside, as well as uh, push for tra traffic calming measures on Haste and Durant, which are currently incredibly uh, dangerous streets that people are forced to um, experience every day. Thank you. Okay, question number three. This starts with you, candidate Luna Parra. What will be your approach to increasing public safety in District 7, what is working now and what isn't? Here's your question, I just need a second. You'd like me to repeat it? No, it's okay, thank you. I think um, I part of um, what I just touched on on, on um, Traffic violence is, is an integral part of public safety that I that I hope that we are able to um, spend more time talking about. Um, but more broadly, I think that our city hasn't done a good enough job of addressing the root causes of crime um, and instead has been overwhelmingly criminalizing poverty, mental illness and circumstance. Um, I think that the push um, uh, for the specialized care unit from our city council has been an incredible success. Uh, and I would like to see it go further because currently it only operates eight hours a day um, and not during, or 10 hours a day and not during the time that is, um, not during the night, which is when most people need it. Um, additionally, uh, our city council has uh, established the Berkeley Department of Transportation or worked to, to establish the Berkeley Department of Transportation. But unfortunately that is not currently possible due to the state, but um, there are certain aspects of it uh, that I would like to see implemented that are actually possible from the state. Thanks. Thank you. Candidate yeah. Chang. Well, I think um, one of the things that has been really uh, working is the fact that um, we do have a specialized care unit that in which we are looking at crime based on not just criminalizing everything, but doing doing a separate difference between nonviolent and violent crimes. Uh, as somebody who helped co-authored uh, the George Floyd Act that includes the specialized care unit. I'm very proud of the city for doing that. Although it is a pilot program, and I will say 
we actually need to hold the current um, providers uh, more accountable uh, as we seek to expand and make it 24 seven and a three digit number. Uh, and, I, and, and, and they need a lot of examining. Um, something that we can do better is street lighting. Uh, something we can do uh, better is also making sure that violence against women is really high in Berkeley. And I plan on addressing this head on, whether that's making sure that that's smart, smarter policing in high crime areas, or also targeting the root crime, root cause of crime, whether that's drugs, uh, mental health, et cetera. Thank you. Question number four, and this goes to candidate Chang first. What are your thoughts on the closure of People's Park and the attempt to build supportive housing there? Thank you. Um, I am proud to say that I support the building on People's Park. Uh, I, It's important for us to remember that this is, a, the. I support the plan that the majority, the, I'm sorry, the city council unanimously supports which is making sure that two-thirds remains open space while we build over a thousand one hundred affordable beds and over 120 housing for the unhoused uh, it is very important that we do that um i understand that the containers are not exactly the most pleasant and you know there was a little bit of heavy-handed and policing but those were all necessary because there was an affordable housing developer that was willing to develop, but pulled out. And I think for us to say that we really care about homelessness, we have to allow this development to go through in order for there to be adequate centers of homeless care and health that folks can access. Here, candidate Luna Para. Thank you. Um, I do not support this development on People's Park, but I think I mostly want to talk about what, as council member, I could do about it. Uh, because at the end of the day, People's Park is the university's land and it's outside the city's jurisdiction. Their interactions with the city, from encroaching on public sidewalks and streets, blocking accessible pathways and bike lanes, harassing students and community members, and requiring nearby residents to show driver's licenses and even apartment leases to access their homes, this is all unacceptable. And from my conversations with the university administration and city administration is that both entities are attempting to absolve themselves of guilt from any of the effects on the community. So what I'm firmly committed to doing is working with the Southside community and the university and the city to address any and all ongoing issues and hold the institutions accountable for creating an unsafe environment. We need more housing and we need more student housing desperately, and I'm prepared to fight for it. I don't think that that requires pitting students against long-term residents and against unhoused people. And I believe we could have already built that housing elsewhere had the funds being spent on the university's contingency um, been spent on this housing. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move to a question about voting. Mm -hmm. And this is candidate Luna Para, you go first. How do you plan to work with partners to ensure more UC students become active voters participating in our democracy? I love this question. Um, one of my favorite quotes is uh, the most effective tactic is one that people enjoy doing. Um, and so as president of Cal Berkeley Democrats, I have proudly worked to build student power at the local level uh, during my undergraduate career UC Berkeley. And I've learned that it's not that people aren't interested or um, aren't passionate. It's that they don't have the resources and that the, it's that the system is designed to deliberately exclude their voices. Um, and I think that that is something that we as, um, as a District 7 council member, I would fight so hard against. I would work consistently with these organizations, with student leaders, with the ASUC to make sure that this um, this this energy of student power that we've built um, is intergenerational and resilient and long lasting. Um, I want to be a representative that not only speaks with people or for people, but with and alongside them. And I think that is the way uh, to get people involved is, is by making it easier for them to do so. Thank you. Candidate Chang. Um, as somebody who uh, currently has the opportunity to serve as a delegate to the Graduate Student Assembly, I think one of the things we can do is really leverage our student leaders to make sure that students feel empowered to participate locally and register to vote. And actually, it is very important that, especially being a university district, 
that student leaders work hand in hand with city leaders so that way there can be um, a synergy in regards to pushing what's needed on campus and off campus on council. And what I plan on doing is to engage with students actively by holding coffee chats uh, with city council members, uh, especially on specific policies that you know we need to work on, such as the fact that we need to build more student housing, and also such as the fact that you know we can maybe do a joint joint coffee with an ASUC senator or a council member, and that is something that I would do. Thank you. Okay, question number six. This goes to candidate Chang. How do you plan to help foster healthy democratic practice that could significantly increase voter turnout among students? Um, well, one of the things that I would definitely do is make sure to leverage um, a lot of the um, um, a lot of the support that I've had in regards to helping student leaders collaborate as stated before, whether that's in the graduate student assembly or with the ASUC, but even with like individual organizations, right? Sometimes it is done by org by org, such as making sure that, you know, the Haas business community president who's endorsed me tells people to not necessarily vote for me, but tell people to register to vote, right? It's not about the end overdose president or the ASUC senators that endorse me telling people to vote for me, but really telling people to register to vote. I think it's really important for folks to be engaged first before and have them register first before we even be able to allow, ask them for their vote and to be even be able to earn their vote. And I think that's how I plan on getting folks engaged to register to vote. Thank you. Candidate Luna Parra. Thank you. Um, while voting is an important part of the democratic process, I think um, an increase in voter turnout will come naturally if people feel if students feel connected to their local government. And getting students involved in local government has been the most rewarding part of my experience in the city. I have led multiple Berkeley local government crash course lectures, uh, co-authored a public comment guide largely used by countless student organizations, and held meetings uh, with student political org organizations to practice giving public comment. One of my favorite memories in Telegraph for People and Cal Berkeley Democrats has been seeing students give fake public comments uh, to the organizations on made up topics, allowing students to build community with one another while learning how to civically engage. And I think that this is the best way uh, to get students to turn out because when they realize um, that the decisions that are being made at the local level are directly impacting them, they'll be inspired to come out and vote and make their own decisions. Um, I think that it is vital uh, to involve involve young people in our democracy, and I'm committed to doing so. Thank you. Okay, the next question goes to you, candidate Luna Farra. Your predecessor abruptly resigned after citing years of verbal harassment and burnout. How do you plan to prepare to respond and take care of yourself if faced by with threats, harassment, and a grueling skill job? Thank you. I, I appreciate this question a lot because I think that one of the biggest issues that we have um, in this campaign, but in the city and elections more broadly is a lack of compassion. Um, and that's something that I'm really uh, excited to do um, is regardless of whether or not I agree with somebody um, and regardless of whether or not we're on the same side, I want to treat everybody with the compassion and respect because they deserve that. Um, and so this I, I, there are two primary focuses to this issue, um, it, which is, you know, culture within the city council that I, I'm excited to um, to work with colleagues and regardless of any political disagreements, work with them. Um, I have worked with most sitting council members on a wide variety of issues, regardless of our differing stances on other issues. And I believe strongly and uh, deliberately in the importance of healthy disagreement and of radical compassion. Um, uh, I believe that one factor that is threatening the culture in City Hall is political factions. Um, and I think that students and I defy those political factions and I'm excited to do so. Thank you. Candidate Chang. Um, I think there's many parts to this. I think part of the reason why Council Member 
Robinson did resign was there is a lack of compassion uh, for him, um, especially him being harassed um, and et cetera. And that's actually part of the reason why I'm running, because I'm hoping that through my candidacy um, that I can help end that negative um, space and environment that has occurred. I think it's very important that we practice deep empathy and we practice deep empathy also in a time in which we're having tough conversations and also not being afraid to have those tough conversations. I am the only candidate that has proven that I can not only disagree with someone, but also actively work against someone campaigning against them and still be endorsed by folks like Senator Scott Weiner and Councilmember Mark Humbert, because at the end of the day, you can disagree and fight against someone politically, but also show a lot of um, um, good, um, good governance when it comes to working together. Thank you. Now, I think that I will ask you both to go ahead and unmute. It doesn't seem like we're having a lot of noise and it will enable us to get through a few more questions if we can go a little bit quicker. And if it becomes an issue for either one of you, please let me know. All right, we're gonna to get to a specific policy in this next question, and that is candidate Chang, you go first. Do you support or oppose the use of automatic license plate readers? Why or why not? I support it as a last resort. Um, I think we must take civil liberties very, very seriously before we're so uh, happy to put up cameras. Um, so I think we need to be supporting a ADLRPs if it's as the last resort, but I think right now I do not agree with the course in which council is taking regarding being super happy. Um, I shouldn't say super happy, but super um, willing to have so many of them at once. But the thing is that we have to take crime seriously. Um, we need to make sure that that when folks have crime happen to them, that we are going to be able to help ways to find the folks that caused harm accountable. And we have seen it work. Uh, once again, I think that should be the last option. And I think, you know, I think we need to take a data-driven approach to all of these situations. Thank you. Candidate Luna Parra. Thank you. Um, generally, um, I, agree that the ALPR should be used as a last resort, but I'm, I get increasingly frustrated with the way that the, the city is currently prioritizing reactive methods of addressing crime rather than proactive ones. And I think this is really an example of that. Um, I, instead of um, focusing on supposed solutions that don't actually uh, prevent crime and also can be used um, negatively, uh, Senator Scott Weiner um, did a, uh, an audit of um, a Sacramento uh, ex a police department, uh, which actively was sending um, ALPR footage to anti-abortion states that were then using that to criminalize people that were coming to give, get abortions here in California. Um, and this is even though that was illegal under their statute. And this is an example of how this kind of data, this kind of surveillance can really end up harming our most marginalized community members. Um, thank you. Thank you. Hey, this is a question is going to uh, be something that you've both touched on in your remarks, but now you get a whole minute. Uh, and uh, candidate Luna Parra, you go first. How would you approach tackling the affordable housing crisis as it impacts students and recent graduates? Thank you. Um... Yeah, the housing crisis, um, the debilitating housing crisis is drastically affecting not only our district, not only our city, but the entire Bay Area. Um, and we really, really need to take an all of the above approach to addressing it. Um, and so this includes building more housing um, at all income levels, because we know that affordable housing is built um, at the private sector when we build um, market rate housing. Additionally, we, the city and the state should be investing robustly in social housing programs and in, um, in giving vouchers for affordable housing as well. At the same time, we need to partner this with rigorous tenant protections 
increased um, uh, rent control and closing the loopholes that we currently have and giving tenants the right to organize. Um, I am proud to be endorsed by a majority of the Berkeley Rent Board, um, and I'm looking forward to working with them as well to make sure that our, our most vulnerable aren't being displaced while we are addressing the crisis. Thank you. Candidate Chang. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Sure. How would you approach tackling the affordable housing crisis as it impacts students and recent graduates? Okay, um, there are three things we need to protect, preserve, and um, protect, preserve, and produce housing. Um, in terms of uh, producing, uh, I am proud to, as an undergraduate to have helped found the More Student Housing Now a student advocacy group that was one of the most successful housing advocacy that forced the UC president to get the chance so to create the 12 sites plan, uh, five of which are currently in construction and seven which are in drafting plans. That's the production part in terms of preserving, we must preserve our housing stock, especially regarding rent control. And as a, a candidate, as the only candidate who's been an elected official who has had the opportunity to serve on the rent board uh, in terms of protecting, I wanna make sure that we hold predatory landlords accountable. One of the things that we should look at is how we regulate how beds are being rented, not just units, but beds. And that's something that we really need to examine. Thank you. So you're both doing a terrific job. We're all ready to, can to question number 10. And this will go to candidate Chang, please. What will you do to ensure the city's districts work together comprehensively? So different needs are seriously considered when voting on policy that will impact all residents. That's a really that's a really good question because oftentimes um, it's important for us as to remember how we impact other districts, right? Like especially with District Seven being a student district um, and a lot of students being there, but also a lot of students being pushed out of District Seven because because District Seven is the most expensive city district to rent in. You know, we do cause a lot of gentrification, so it's very important to look inward in regards to how we can lead um, on issues such as housing production. But it's also important to have understanding and realize that other districts have different lived experiences. So when folks like Councilmember Terry Taplin and Ben Bartlett, District 2 and 3, uh, representing traditionally red line areas, or even District 8, which is the Hills, or even Councilmember Wayngrafts, which is the Hills, who've all endorsed me, when they talk about crime and they are in desperate need of more services, we also have empathy towards that. And that's how I plan on working with other council councils districts. Thank you. Candidate Luna Parra. Thank you. I think um because all of the um all of the issues that we're addressing are intrinsically intertwined with one another um, and with the rest of the city, um, it's crucial to be able to work with other constituencies outside of the district, outside of district seven. Um, and that's why I am so proud, especially um, to be supported by SEIU 1021, uh, which is the city workers, uh, uh, it represents the majority of the city workers. Um, this, um, as well as UAW Region 6, which represents academic workers um, on campus. Being able to consistently talk to and interact with, um, especially the most marginalized community members um, and exploited community members throughout the city um, is crucial and will be at the forefront of all of my decision making. Um, I have been very proud to do so as a zoning adjustments board member. Um, uh, communicating with people around the city. Um, and I look forward to doing that not only on land use issues, but on issues more broadly. Thank you. Okay, uh, we move to uh, question 11. It goes to candidate Luna Para. The city council recently voted to authorize the purchase of the property on 4th Street and return it to indigenous people instead of approving housing on the site. What is your view of this position? Thank you. Um, I appreciate this question a lot too because um, it, it is so complicated. Um, 
And in fact, a, a group that I work closely with, East Bay for Everyone, um, which is dedicated to producing more housing, deliberately chose not to weigh in on this issue um, because it has to do with indigenous people's rights. I support the city's decision to do this. Um, and I'm excited to see uh, what the space can look like um, handed over to um, indigenous groups, indigenous sovereignty. However, this, seat, this site was also included in the city's housing element um, to include about 300 units. Those are units that the city is required to uh, find another uh, lot in the city to build on. Um, and I will push for the city to do so. Um, additionally, I would like to see the city remove all zoning restrictions on this site specifically and truly give the land back um, to indigenous people um, without the restrictions from the city um, so that they are able to do whatever they would like with that land. Thank you. Candidate Chang. I do support the city's decision to have um, to purchase the land. I think it is important that we do have cultural spaces in the city and that we do build communities around um, other cultures, especially since we are on indigenous lands. And I think that's very, very important. I also agree that while we are doing this and there is actual real reasons to, uh, we don't just do blanket um landmarks um, that occur um, just because a council member lives next to it. And I think it's, you know, I think we have to be careful on how we take actions like these, but I think in regards to respect to um, indigenous people, especially us being on their land and their territory in this situation, uh, I do support the council's decision. Thank you. Hey, uh, candidate Chang. The city of Berkeley is dealing with a staffing shortage in all departments. What role do you think the city council has to alleviate this issue? Well, under the city charter, um, the, the only real power that council currently has is to oversee the city manager and make sure that the city manager does their job regarding making sure that folks are hired. I think that when there's a will, there's a way. Uh, we saw how certain management positions was hired within 12 days of posting. Um, I am personally very alarmed that in terms of that kind of speed for a management position, but that is a demonstration of we can hire more people more aggressively if we want to. But at the same time, it's also about whether or not we have good benefit packages for employee. And, you know, it's to really challenge the city manager on whether or not the employee of choice uh, is indeed actually the employee of choice. As somebody who is lucky to be the president of my local chapter union, I understand that workers um, oftentimes do not feel respected by management and oftentimes do say that it doesn't feel like it's the employer of choice. And that's something that council really has to hold city management accountable on. Thank you. Candidate Luna Parra. Thank you. Um, multiple projects have been stalled under the current city's leadership due to executive mismanagement. Um, our city's public works process cannot be followed through on. Our reimagining policing task force solutions are continuously delayed and diluted, and our employees are unsatisfied and exploited. I am excited to work with my colleagues in constant communication with SEIU 1021, which I am proud to be solely endorsed by, and with the public to address these issues. No one in city government is above accountability and transparency, and I am willing to hold our city leadership accountable uh, when necessary. If anyone in City Hall is misleading the public or the council or contributing to a dangerous workplace culture, um, I will not hesitate to push for changes, all in consultation with City Hall labor unions and the public. Thank you. Candidate Luna Parra, how do you propose the city deals with its aging infrastructure? This is such a good question. Um, after Measure L failed um, in 2022, unfortunately, our bond measure, um, me and a couple other young leaders uh, took the step forward to uh, draft a citizens initiative um, to uh, as a part parcel tax to fund our street infrastructure. Um, and that parcel tax is now rapidly collecting signatures throughout the entire city um, and would uh, improve our city's uh, streets PCI um, 
throughout the whole city. We have created um, an inter intergenerational, uh, you know, across the aisle um, coalition of people that are passionate about making sure that our streets are safe for the people that are using them. Um, and that's why I'm so proud to be um, a co-author and one of the biggest supporters of the Berkeley Citizens for Safe Streets measure, um, along with um, our regional uh, housing bond, affordable housing bond that's coming up next year. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to supporting those. Thank you. Candidate Chang. Again, if you're willing to leave your um, yes, yes, thank your you. microphones on, let's try that. Yes, uh, can you just repeat the question again? Thank you. How do you propose the city deals with its aging infrastructure? Thank you. Um, you know, when we talk about the city's in aging infrastructure, I think more than just beyond roads, although that is a very big one, and I'm also proud to uh, support the safe street measures. Um, I was a big advocate of Measure L, and unfortunately, it did not pass. Um, and I'm very proud to have supported it. Um, but I think when I also think of it, I think of it of whether that is our police station. I'm sorry, not police station. Our fire, um, our fire stations, right? Our fire stations uh, actually is in need of a new training location that we currently do not have. Uh, and these, uh, and then also our old city hall, right, is now uh, not operable. And I think these are things that we have to really consider how to tackle them. Um, I do think we should look at additional bonds in regards to how we can uh, make sure to do it, maybe also re-examining how Measure FF is being spent. But all of these things are important in regards to making sure that our infrastructure, not just our roads, but also our city, um, actual city properties are preserved well, so that way the public can use them. Thank Okay, uh, candidate Chang, this next question is for you. As you know, city council meetings have been recently disrupted due to protests on the of the outgoing war and humanitarian crisis in Gaza. How would you work with your colleagues on the council and the protesters to try and find a path forward? On the issue of the uh, the ceasefire itself, I want to be very clear. I do support a global ceasefire. I've worked against the current Netanyahu administration. I've been supporting Blue and White when the only heir member of the Knesset came to UC Berkeley. I welcomed her with open arms to support some of her agenda. Um, in terms of local ceasefire, I do think it is important for us to realize that you know we have to we can't just be selectively prosecuting on what we think is important globally, especially on issues that will deeply divide our community. And I think anybody who is trying to paint that of this local ceasefire resolution would solve the global crisis is not it, it, it is not prioritizing what District 7 needs right now. But in regards to the meetings itself, I what what I love about Berkeley is the fact that we do want to make as much space as possible for folks to um voice their opinions. I know council has tried to do that. They should do that more and they should, they also should be meeting even with the noise uh, since there's mics and captions and not Thank go to- you. Candidate Luna Potter. Thank you. Um, I would argue actually that what is really dividing our community is the city's inability to establish a power, powerful position against the civilian casualties, um, against ongoing occupation and oppression of the Palestinian people and against our tax dollars being used to fund this violence in the Middle East. And therefore, I support introducing and passing a ceasefire resolution in the Berkeley City Council um, to the city of Berkeley, which was the first city to pass a resolution condemning South African apartheid and has weighed in on a number of international conflicts, especially during injustices, has a duty to do so. Therefore, the city's uh, silence on the ongoing ethnic cleansing in Gaza speaks volumes and is hurting so many of our community members. We should pass a resolution that affirms our support for our Palestinian and Israeli residents, condemns anti-Semitism, um, and, uh, and uh, one that unequivocally also condemns the use of our tax dollars to fund oppression and human rights violations. A call for peace will work to unify our city against injustice, and I support doing so. Thank you. Hey, candidate Luna Para, do you believe that you have a role to play in ensuring protests and events around about the war remain peaceful on campus? And if so, 
please describe what actions you envision taking. Thank you. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, I think that um, it is it is crucial that you know I there there is a I I I stand in solidarity with people who have been uh, peacefully protesting on campus. Um, specifically, right now there have uh, the Palestinian uh, graduate student group has been blocking off uh, most of Sather Gate um, in uh, in protest of the UC's funding. Uh, but at the same time. Um, we have to make sure that everybody is safe on our on our campus. However, I think that by refusing to divest from Israel Israel's attacks on Gaza, um, the UC is inviting this conflict and onto our campus. And so I'm um, I I would work with the University of California to address people's concerns, um, make sure that people are safe, but also respond to the people that are upset um, and uh, are upset specifically that they're they're funding dollars or their tuition dollars is going um, to fund uh, these tragedies. Thank you. Candidate Chang. I think one of the most wonderful things about UC Berkeley and what makes UC Berkeley's reputation so great is the fact that it is an amazing space for activism and, you know, and I think that's something that, to his, especially with the free speech movement on Sprawl, it's something that we should be very proud of. Currently, I do think UC Berkeley is having trouble with in regards to folks feeling like they can actually exercise their free speech. Um, it is always concerning when folks when windows are broken and, or folks are um, perhaps being choked. And I think or even when there's protests and there's counter protests and oftentimes I think something that I would want to do is I definitely want to make sure that I am if I'm a if I'm aware of it, be present to make sure to at least speak out um, to say that this is not okay, uh, whether or not that's effective. That's, I, I think still being present is important. And those are some of the things that I really hope to address and making sure that no matter what your views are, you have the freedom to express it. And I think that is perhaps the most important. Thank you. Okay, candidate Chang. What will be your approach to cultivating inclusion and hearing different perspectives when developing public policy and new programs? I think the first thing in regards to developing new programs and new policies is that, you know, it's not me telling communities, especially communities of interest, what is best for them. I think it's more important to go to them to tell me. I think practicing humility and being willing to say what I don't know um, more so than what I know is perhaps the most important thing. Um, my former uh, council member that I worked for Chris Worthington is always said it's none of um, it, it's none of us uh, without us and I think um, it is very important to to make sure that um, communities that are most impacted are the ones that are brought forward. I also think I believe your question also, is in regards to dealing with the fact that we do, oftentimes our politics is very um, pitted against one another. And I think being willing to have difficult conversations and also just being willing to be in a space in which folks are hostile to you, but being willing to listen, I think is also very, very important. Thank you. Candidate Luna Parr. Thank you. Um, I think, um... You know, for so long, um, even though we make up between a, a fourth and a third of the city's population, um, students are drastically underrepresented in City Hall. Um, and this has created a lot of tension between the city and between um, between students. And I think in working to bridge that gap, not only for students that I agree with, but students um, of any perspective is so important. Um, and so I am looking forward to holding regular town hall events, um, open office hours and community events, as I said earlier, uh, where any student or any constituent is able to come and speak to me. Um, I want to meet with a coalition of community organizations and affinity groups that are being disproportionately affected by different policies, um, but most importantly, help train District 7 residents to make public comment, to gain organizing skills, and to write their own legislation um, that we can then work together uh, to bring to the City Council. Thank you. Okay, this will be our last question. 
we're going to move to the um, one more question about the city, and then we'll move to closing statements. Candidate Luna Parra, you'll go first. Some voters feel that there's a lack of transparency and don't know what this, how the city is spending funding. Do you agree or disagree that there is a transparency problem? And if there is a problem, what would you do to address it? I think that there is a, um, a transparency problem, but I don't know if there's anyone, I don't think that there's anyone specific to blame for it. Um, I think it's kind of a problem of um, how inaccessible local government is more generally. Um, for example, uh, many cities across the Bay and our school board um, make sure that their meetings are um, are uh, in Spanish as well as English. Um, and our city council meetings don't do that. Um, I think that being transparent is important, um, but what is the most important is being accessible. And obviously they go hand in hand. Um, and so I would like to see um, our meetings be in be translated in multiple languages. Um, I would like to see um, uh, higher scrutiny of um, city leadership and of uh, some of the issues that are going on deep inside the system. Um, and I would work closely, um, especially with our wonderful city auditor who is doing an incredible job in bringing some of these issues to light. Thank you. Candidate Chang. Can you just repeat the question one more time, just so I know? Sure. Some voters feel that there is a lack of transparency and don't know how the city is spending funding. Do you agree or disagree that there is a transparency problem? And if there is a problem, what will you do to address it? So I hate to say that I do agree because at the end, actions speak louder than words. We have some of the toughest sunshine policies in the country, which actually requires transparency. We have some of the most um, intricate commissions like the Open Government Commission uh, um, that actually really promotes transparency. And for example, stuff like our budget is posted online. So is all of our materials. But once again, action speaks louder than words. And the reality is that, yes, people can do PR, um, public records requests, but they're not given on time and they take a very long time. And yes, folks can't access the budget, but the way that the budget is being presented is in a, a PDF document that is not interactive like the way some of the other cities do in which you can literally click departments and click on funds and all these different things in which you can see essentially where the money goes. So I think really bring the city to um, the technology, especially to modern day and making it accessible is very important. Whether that's language or just digital literacy, I think it's all very, very important. Thank you. Okay, you have done a terrific job. We're done with the questions. Take a deep breath and prepare for your closing statement. I have a few things to share with the audience. Before the candidates give their closing statements, I have a few remarks on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Berkeley, Albany, and Emeryville. Thank you to the candidates for running for office and for your participation this evening. I also wanna thank the audience for engaging in our democracy. For further information about upcoming forums and more, please visit the League's website lwvbae.org. The deadline to register to vote for this special election is April 1st. You can register online at registertovote.ca.gov or with paper applications available at any public library, the U.S. Post Office, the DMV, or at the City Clerk's to office at 2180 Milvia Street. Paper applications must be postmarked or hand delivered by 5 p.m. on Monday, April 1st to the Alameda County Registrar of Voters at 1225 Fallon Street in Oakland. If you're already registered, check your registration status to confirm that your information is correct. You need to re-register if you've moved, if you've changed your name, or wish to change your political party presence. District 7 covers the UC Berkeley campus and five blocks south. All registered voters in District 7 will receive a ballot 
and a return envelope in the mail. You can still vote if you don't receive a ballot in the mail, didn't register to vote by April 1st, or have a ballot that is lost or damaged. Register and vote at the YWCA Vote Center at 2600 Bancroft Way or at the Register of Voters Office at 1225 Fallon Street in Oakland until 8 o'clock on Election Day, which again is April 16th. These ballots do take longer to process, but they will be counted once the county elections office verifies your voter registration. To avoid delay, please register to vote online. The vote by mail period opened on March 18th, yesterday, or two days ago now. Voters can send their ballots by mail, deliver them to election drop boxes, or visit a vote center in person. Mailed ballots must be postmarked on or before election day, which again is April 16th. <laughs> Drop boxes will be available at UC Berkeley between Sather Gate and the Architects and Engineering Building in front of Berkeley City Hall at 2180 Milvia Street and an in-person vote center at the YWCA Berkeley. 2600 Bancroft Way, which will be open starting April 6th from 9 to 5, and on Election Day, April 16th, the Vote Center will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Please aware, be aware that a council race uses ranked choice voting, which means voters should mark their first and second choice candidates in order of preference. We invite you to join the league to help us engage voters and defend democracy. We do so much more than voter registration and education. We work on issues like climate change, criminal justice reform, health care, and much more. Visit our website and social media accounts at LWBBAE. Vote by mail ballots have been sent to all registered voters starting on March 16th for this special election. Remember to return your vote by mail ballots by April 16th or vote in person. We're encouraging voters to vote as early as possible. If you need more information, please visit our website, lwvbae.org slash elections, or the Registrar of Voters website, acvote.gov. We're now going to have each candidate give a closing statement. Candidate Luna Para, you will go first. Thank you. I have the support of District Attorney Pamela Price, Berkeley School Board, School Board President Anna Vasudev, Oakland City Council President Nikki Fortunata Boss, a majority of the Rent Stabilization Board, former council members Kate Harrison and Gordon Wozniak, along with a wide variety of progressive community organizations and student leaders and student organizers. As young people, we are repeatedly reminded of our supposed lack of experience, of our supposed idealism, of our supposed stubbornness, as if our fresh perspective, passion, and dedication aren't vital to a functioning, healthy, long-lasting democracy. I am a committed progressive, and I strongly believe um, that this district deserves someone with strong connections to this community. I'd also like to point out that while I'm inspired by a long line of women Berkeley organizers, the most recent student leaders who have taken the step to run for office have been men. When I learned that if elected, I would be the first Latina to ever serve on the Berkeley City Council, I was disappointed, but not surprised. A woman hasn't represented this district in over 25 years, even though a majority of UC Berkeley students are women. As a young woman, an organizer, a commissioner, a leader, and now a candidate, I more than understand the unique experiences, frustrations, and inequalities that we face. And I am committed to representing not only my communities, but the entire city of Berkeley with the new lens and fresh perspective it desperately needs and deserves. I humbly ask you to join so many student and community leaders in supporting a committed, experienced, and principled undergraduate a student activist for the undergraduate uh, student Council District. And please go to CeciliaForBerkeley.com to learn more, uh, donate, and contact me. 
I thank you all so much for the opportunity uh, to speak with you. Thank you so much to the League of Women Voters. And I'm looking forward to working with and alongside you as we fight for a brighter, more equitable, more sustainable future. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Cheng, your closing statement. Thank you. And thank you to the League of Women Voters for hosting this debate tonight. I think it would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that well, this is the most friendly and least hostile debate platform I've got to participate in. To say the least, the questions were definitely the most difficult and most challenging. Um, this election matters. This election matters um, because we've had two shootings within the last two years in District 7. We've had multiple drug overdoses. Um, many people have died. Um, and also, UC Berkeley being number one public university ranks number three in hate crimes. And I've seen a lot of this firsthand as an undergraduate, but now as a grad student, I can tell you that unfortunately things have gotten worse. And we need a leader that is unafraid and is bold and will find creative solutions in facing these issues head on. And I have the record and proven record to show that I can, whether that is helping co-author the George Floyd Act, creating the specialized care unit that creates a non-police uh, non emergency response for mental health and nonviolent crises, or making sure that we have funding uh, for step-up housing, which is housing for the homeless bill on university, or whether that's me being an undergraduate, having raised $400,000 for my affordable housing community, the Berkeley Student Cooperative, making sure that, um, making sure that parking lots at churches are actually funded and given money and supportive to help folks get housed in um, um, our community as well. These are all things that I should have a tra proven track record to do. And I would be so honored and so humble to have the opportunity to hopefully deliver for District 7 like I've been doing for so long uh, for other districts um, in the city of Berkeley. Thank you. Thank you. You've both done a wonderful job. I appreciate the, your attention and energy tonight. Please join me in a round of applause for the candidates. Thank you to the League of Women Voter Volunteers for making tonight happen. And thank you all very much for attending and making the effort to be educated voters. The city of Berkeley will be stronger because of your efforts. Good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you.